Hi, I'm Rebecca Davis. I'm the archivist at the Limestone County Archives in Athens, Alabama. It's a local government archives where we have government records dating back to 1818 as well as non-government records such as photos and postcards and so on that all related to Limestone County history. And it, I'm also a user of Starter by Preservica. Just to tell you a little bit about why I got started using Starter by Preservica, first of all, it's free. I mean, just to be honest, Honest, uh, you have nothing to lose or I had nothing to lose by giving it a shot you know I get five gigabytes of preservation um, everybody does for free just by registering an account and that was a great way to get started with preserving what we have and to understanding the ins and outs of digital preservation Another great opportunity was just to be a beta tester of the product. The um, folks at Preservica gave me a call and said, hey, would you like to test it out? See what you think. Tell us what we could do better. And I was like, I can always tell people what to do better. I and many other people have provided feedback that I think has helped hone this product into being something that is really useful for people in small shops like mine, just a two-person shop, local government, small universities, that type of thing, that may not be ready to go whole hog into the full version of Preservica. Now, the second reason that we wanted to use Starter by Preservica for our collections is we have a lot of really great stuff, but they were not easily accessible. They were not easily searchable. So Preservica offered a way for us to be able to change that. The third reason that we wanted to use Starter by Preservica is that our digital records are stored on servers, but they just haven't really been preserved. And um, in a way that we know is going to be sustainable and, um, and and is up to standard. And so this is going to be, this is, Preservica offers a way for us to do that in a way that's accessible and understandable. So now I want to talk a little bit about how we chose which records that we want to put into Starter and where we, how we want to, how we prioritize those decisions. We started with the low hanging fruit. So we had some um, important collections that were already digitized. Our postcard collection that um, a lot of great photos, picture postcards of historic landmarks of Limestone County, as well as the Looney Collection, which has nothing to do with the crazy people of Limestone County. It's all about a man named uh, Frank Looney, who his family donated his large collection of photos that he had either taken or collected over the years of Limestone County landmarks and people and events. And um, those, many of those had already been digitized and identified and we had great metadata uh, already uh, available to us that had actually never been entered into any sort of system, content management system either. And so that was really easy to just drag and drop it right in. The second priority, which is pretty close after the first, is transitioning our government records because really that is our primary impetus for being, is to preserve those Limestone County government records that date back to the county's founding in 1818. And those were already digitized from microfilm and available already on our site, but it's a very complicated system that uh, our patrons have a hard time using. And so being able to move those records, which are each page is its own TIFF file. It was just this massive amount of content, but to be able to streamline those into multi-page PDFs that I could then pull into Starter and someone who wants to look through that can just open the whole book up, book up in um, Preservica in Starter and just scroll right down through the pages, read it just like you would a, like a Kindle book or whatever. And then the third priority that we have for our records is the ones that are just most used, most needed, most requested. We get the most questions about. Um, a lot of this has to do with uh, the articles that I've written and the videos that I've made that um, often answer a lot of the questions that people have about limestone county history and want to call me up or email me or 
want to ask these questions and that gets it out there and one of the things we were able to do then is for example if there's an article written about the former mayor Charles Sarver who now supposedly is a ghost then I have the article about Mr. Sarver and I have it cross reference to the photo of Mr. Sarver and so people can get, be able to have a more enriching experience of using our website by going to our digital archives that we have powered by Starter. When it comes to getting things prepared to upload into Preservica, that's really the easy part. For example, the postcard collection. All of those postcards had already been digitized uh, or scanned in and were just hanging out in a folder. And so I was able to just go to my Preservica admin portal. I just dragged it from my folder on my desktop over into Preservica and dropped it. And there it is. It just it shows you the ingest and it goes right in. And so getting things ready, my part of actually getting them ready to upload is really the hard part. Uploading them, just a cinch. It's just like that. I mean, literally as quick as that. So that's the easy part. One thing to keep in mind is help is always literally just a click away. If you ever get stumped, if you can't figure out what to do next, that's what this handy dandy little question mark is for. Click on that and they're here to help. You can search for what you're looking for or you can scroll down through. You can see all these different questions that are answered, topics that are covered in the knowledge base. There's community forums where people are asking questions and answering and there's release notes. So it's help is always just right there when you need it. Anytime you need help as you're getting going with Preservica. Now, this is where it gets nerdy. One of my favorite things about this is actually being able to just add the metadata, which I know makes me sound like a super archives nerd and I am not ashamed. So this is, once I have everything uploaded, it's so easy in the portal to be able to move things around, to add the metadata, and to add folder level and item level metadata. And so, like I said, we had a lot of records, especially like postcards or the Looney collection where he wrote extensive notes on the backs of his photos or in the on the envelopes, on the outside of the envelopes that he had put his, um, his photos in. And so we were able to finally add in all the notes he had made about what was there and what had been there before and what it was a picture of, just everything. And so being able to really connect the record with its actual context and um, pull it all together into a pretty little package and tie a bow on top. It just really made it, like I said, kind of exciting to me, but that's just the archives nerd in me, I suppose. <laughs> So now I want to show you a little bit about how we are using this for outreach and education. Let's say I want to do a search for something popular in Limestone County history. We'll say the square because that is the center of our town and our history. Here's uh, one of the scenes of the public square in 1910. I can like it. I can download it. So I have it for my very own. I can uh, save it to my desktop there and have a copy of it. I can, yeah, there it is. And then I can go back and I can share it on Twitter and tell all my friends about this beautiful picture I found. I can do the same by sharing on Facebook, create a post that links back to the archives, digital archives page. I can send it via email. I can send a link to it, tell my friends, hey, check this out. This is something you might be interested in. And then let's say I want to branch out a little bit more and do a search for everything that was going on in Athens and Limestone County in 1920, 100 years ago. This is something that teachers in particular are doing 100 years ago with their kids, and we have things organized by decade. So a search for 1920 would get you to all these different resources of information and photos and videos and articles about Limestone County in 1920. As you scroll down through there, you can take a look, see what we have, and that takes you to the different articles and pictures and so on. Here's a postcard of the Limestone County Courthouse uh, with a crowd around it in 1920, and I can do the same with all those different resources. So that kind of shows you it's 
really easy to use and it's easy to get started. And so with that said, I just want to encourage everyone who has signed up, registered for a starter account to just jump in there and do it. And so um, there's no time like the present. I mean, the best time to have get it, gotten started for me would have been 10 years ago when I started at the Lifestyle County Archives, but there's no time like today. So with that said, just go for it. Put your five gigabytes of data in there and have a ball. Thank <laughs> you.